right, here we are at the homepage of the Council of Europe on the European Language Portfolio. Now, what is the ELP, the European Language Portfolio? It is meant to be a tool for learners and owned by learners where they can document their learning experience in their journey on learning a different language and culture and also where they can self-assess their skills and document their development in a foreign language. On this page, you can find templates which you can use to build your own ELP for your learners, but if you didn't want to go that far, you can have a look in your own country, check with school, school book publishers, because there have been a lot of efforts in creating ready-made ELPs, which can be bought and used in the classroom. Now, while people have developed electronic portfolios available and accessible online, the majority of portfolios are still paper-based, like a folder like this. I'd like to talk you through this folder. It's an example from the school context in Germany. Here we go. This is the Europäisches Portfolio der Sprachen, and that's aimed for school kids in their first year of a foreign language. And the portfolio has different sections here. I'll go through a few features with you. First of all, there is the tab Ich und die Welt, Ich in der Welt, that means me and the world, and that's personal information about the student. Then there is a section on how the student best learns languages, where languages are used in the world, and how the student learns languages, for example, when I listen, what does help me in order to get better. And there is also a section, a summative, looking back, mein Rückblick. And in this summative section, after one, the first school year, the student can look back and reflect on what they can do. And here you see clearly the link to the Common European Framework. This is because it's the first year A1 and you've got the descriptors of the level A1 and the student can tick whether they can do it and how well they can do it. All right, here we are back at the Council of Europe pages for the European Language Portfolio. And if you wanted to locate the self-assessment grids, unfortunately, they're very well hidden. So this is the path on how to get there. First, you click on how to develop an ELP model. That's down here, that link. Within this link, you go on the guide to compiling an ELP. Within that link, you have to click on the language passport. And within the language passport, you find a link to the self-assessment grid. Here you see all these languages Self-assessment grids have been developed for all these languages and a good thing is if you have a heterogeneous learner group with people from many different backgrounds, you can actually in the beginning with a, with a, with a beginner learners, you can actually use a self-assessment grid in the language learner's first language to make it easier for them to understand what they're assessing themselves against. If we have a look at one example, let's go back to the German example. Here we have one example. In German it's called der Raster zur Selbstbeurteilung, meaning a self-assessment grid. And here you find the six CFR levels ascending, and you find the different areas, listening, reading, interaction, monologic speaking, and writing. And for each level you find a descriptor, and the students are asked then to tick that box where they think they, they can perform the required tasks. All right, in this video, I've taken you to the European Language Portfolio, a practical tool for learners, owned by learners, to promulgate their learner autonomy and to motivate them for lifelong language learning. And I've shown you a few features of an actual portfolio, including the self-assessment scales. And I think it's worth going online now again in the next video to show you where you can find such self-assessment scales online. Oh.